Hey y'all, it's DIY Alex. I'm so excited that you're here because in this Cricut Design Space tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add accents and flourishes to your text or your writing in Cricut Design Space. These are officially called glyphs, but I know a lot of beginners don't realize that that's the name of them. So <laughs> we're going to be working with glyphs in this video to take our text just up to the next level um, using those extra characters that we often see in the advertisements for these fonts. They make them really pretty and really neat. So um, let's go ahead and start by adding some text to our canvas because I want to leave a reference point for before we start adding glyphs so you can see what a difference this is going to make. So I'm going to start by going over to the design panel here on the left hand side and clicking on the T for text. That's going to open up a new text box here in the bottom corner. So I'm just going to scoot it over to this side, highlight it with my mouse, and then type Carter because that is my little boy's name. And I want to make him a really cool baseball themed onesie. So first I want to change this text box into the font that I'm going to be using today. So to do that, I'm going to double click on it to highlight all the text. Then I'm going to go up to the font section and click on the drop down menu. And that is <laughs> going to open up the font menu. Now I'm already cheating here because I have my uh, font already selected. But if I didn't already have my font selected, I would go over to my system fonts and you can either search through them in alphabetical order. Or if you know the name, we can just go ahead and type it in here. So I'm going to be using a font today called, I think it's pronounced Blendis. I don't know. It's kind of a funky name, um, but I really loved the baseball accents here and it turns out super cute. So you guys are going to love it. I'll link this font for you in the description below if you want to use it yourself. Um, so you can see that my text box changed to become the Blendis font when I clicked it. Next, I want to introduce you to one of my favorite tools when it comes to working with fonts. Um, this is only for Windows, by the way. It does not have a Mac version, um, but I really like this because a lot of folks use the character map on their computer, which is a program that comes with your computer, and it's fine. It's just that the characters are really small, and I think they're really hard to see. So MainType is a free tool that you can download and just use the free version of. So when you open up MainType, it looks like this. I will put a link for this, by the way, in the description of this video as well. Um, but when it opens up the version of main type, I like to click on use free edition. I've never purchased it before. I'm sure there are probably some added benefits to having the paid version, but all I've ever needed is the free one. Then you can scroll down through um, all of your fonts. They are in alphabetical order here and you can actually type in a preview up here if you want to type your text in and see what it's going to look like. So you have those options for searching but since I already know what I'm going to be using I'm going to go up to the right hand corner and next to font name I'm going to type in this Blendis font and click on search so that I can just go directly to it. And then once it's highlighted, you'll see on the right hand side that there are tons of different characters that I have to use with my font. Um, but typically you're going to want to scroll towards the bottom and make sure that your section is chosen as private use area. But this is going to show you lots of different characters that you won't usually get by just typing in your text. So for example, I'm going to be using the capital C here. Um, and to make this bigger, all I did was click and hold my mouse down. And then it makes the character way bigger and easier to see. So that's why I like using this over the character map. But you can also see that there's lots of other lowercase letters and all kinds of cool stuff that you can use with this font, which is what makes it so much fun. So to get started, I'm going to use this um, capital C. And in order to copy it, you can highlight it and then you can use control C to copy on your keyboard. Then we go into Cricut Design Space and open this back up. And next we need to open up a text box just like we did before. But one of the keys here is it needs to be using the correct font already. So we need to make sure that the Blendis is still selected when we open up this new text box. I'm going to delete the other text out of this and I'm going to start by pressing control V to paste onto my canvas. But now that I have my C, I'm going to go next to that and type in the rest of Carter. 
but I'd like to add one of those really cute baseball kind of swashes underneath um, so that it has like that vintage look. So let's go back to main type and I'm going to search through the private use area once again and see if I can find an R for the last letter that is going to connect to um, one of those cool swashes. If you scroll all the way down, you have all these different shapes of swashes to use, but we have to have a letter that's going to kind of connect with that. So if I look right here, it's actually going to be this R that looks like this because it kind of opens up and gets nice and wide there at the bottom. And that's going to be perfect for me. So again, I'm going to click it to highlight it. And then I'm going to use control C on my keyboard. Then I'm going to go back to Cricut Design Space. I'm going to double click in my text box and I'm going to click control V to paste. And then you'll see the differences in these two R's. And once I have the second R, I can go ahead and click on my cursor one character back and just use backspace on my keyboard to delete it. So now we have part of a cool piece, but I still want to finish um, adding that swash onto the bottom. So we're going to go back to main type and we're going to find the right um, accent to go underneath of Carter. So I'm going to go back down to the bottom of the private use area. And I need my swatch to go this direction um, since that's where my letters go. So I'm going to select this one because it's my favorite. But of course, there are lots of other shapes here, depending on the word you're using and what you want it to look like. So again, I'm just going to click it to highlight it and use control C. And then I'm going to go back into a Cricut design space. Now I want to be able to move this independent of the rest of the word Carter. So I'm going to open up another new text box. I don't know why they open up so low <laughs> and I'm going to highlight that text, delete it, and then use control V to paste this in to its own text box. And now I can kind of work with it all by itself. So for starters, it's a little bit short. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size a bit. Then what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to zoom in on this text a bit. So then I'm going to highlight my accent and I'm going to bring it over towards this R. But as you can kind of see, it's not like it doesn't connect all that well. So I'm going to do a couple different things to negate this. Um, one of them is that I'm going to start by clicking on the Carter text box. And when I get this rounded arrow, I'll hold my mouse down and then tilt it just a little bit to the left just so I can leave some room for the swash. Then I'm going to bring this over and tilt it also. So it has a little bit of a better connection with the R and it's not perfect yet, but that's okay. We're going to work on that. You guys see how like the very tip of that is still not in line with the R. I'm going to try and be really precise. It can be really tricky when you're <laughs> in really close in design space. But I'm going to try and use my mouse, but it looks like that's too big of a movement. So instead, I'm going to use the arrows on my keyboard. They tend to be a little bit more of a subtle movement uh, than using just your mouse. And that's not absolutely perfect right there, but that's probably as good of a connection as this line is going to get. Um, if you have an opportunity to make some of these types of designs in other programs, such as like Adobe Illustrator, it's honestly going to be easier for you to do it. But I realize that many of you don't. And that's why I want to show you how to do this in design space, because you can do it. It's just a little funky and you have to do some workarounds. So we have this in place, but now we have this weird gap here, right? And so here's how I'm going to remedy that. I'm going to go into the basic shapes panel and I'm just going to choose like a circle or an oval, either one. And I'm going to add that to my canvas. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so that everything works OK. Because sometimes, like I said, when you get really zoomed in with design space, design space gets a little bit like weirded out by that. And then I'm going to make this circle really small. And while I have it selected, I'm going to go under more and click on unlock so that I can adjust both the width and the height to be what I need. Now I'm going to zoom back in and get closer to the design. And I'm basically going to place this kind of like a band-aid over top of that funky shape. 
And it doesn't have to be pretty because we are going to make this all one image here soon. But we got to get it as close as possible before we do that. So with that shape unlocked, I can kind of wiggle my mouse around until I get that shape exactly where I want it. And again, I'm trying to fix this little gap right here. And my mouse is moving it a little too much. So I'm going to use the arrow keys to kind of fix this how I need to. Now I'm having trouble selecting just the circle. So I'm going to select it in the layers panel here. And then I'm going to tilt it some because I think that would be useful. Then while it's still selected, I'm going to use my arrow keys again to try and shift it into place. I'm going to click off of it and see if there's any gaps missing. And it looks like there are some gaps here and here. So I'm going to keep working at it. I'm going to bring this down a little bit and maybe bump it out just a little. To kind of round out that area that's pointed. And I actually think that those look really good as far as closing the gaps. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to zoom out a little bit. We're going to click and hold our mouse down and select the whole design. Then we're going to go under the combine menu and choose Unite. Unite is great because we can actually undo it if necessary. And it looks like when we zoom back in, there is a little hole in our text right here. So let's go ahead and zoom back out. I'm going to undo that. Get in close again. And I'm going to stretch our oval to fit this way just a little bit. And hopefully that will cover our design. So we'll zoom back out. Go under combine and choose unite. And then once we're done, it looks like this. So now it's all one continuous piece. You can't even tell that there was ever a gap here. And like I said, I know it's not 100% perfect, um, but from a far away distance, I think it's going to look great. So I hope that helps give you a real life example of all the amazing things that you can do with different accents and flourishes in Cricut Design Space. So if you guys want to see more helpful videos, a lot like this one, then make sure you subscribe to DIY Alex. And if you want to see me use this Carter design in a real project, then I'll put the video right here on the screen so you can go check it out all the hearts.